Welcome to our ultimate guide on the types of shares. Whether you're new to investing or just curious, understanding shares is key to knowing how businesses grow and how you can benefit from their success. So, let's dive in. Shares, also known as stocks or equity, represent a piece of ownership in a company. Imagine a company as a whole pizza. When you own shares, you own a slice of that pizza. This entitles you to a portion of the profits and a say in how the company is run. There are mainly four types of shares. Today, in this video, I will talk about them in details. Let's talk about the first type of shares, ordinary shares or equity shares. These are the most basic and widely traded type of share issued by a company. They represent the most fundamental form of ownership in a company and come with a combination of rights and risks for shareholders. Here's a detailed breakdown of ordinary shares. Ownership rights. 1. Voting rights. Ordinary shareholders have the right to vote on important company matters. This includes voting on electing board members, approving major business decisions like mergers and acquisitions, and even proposals related to compensation for company executives. The number of votes typically corresponds to the number of shares owned, with one vote per share being the most common scenario. 2. Profits or Dividends Ordinary shareholders may receive a portion of the company's profits in the form of dividends. However, unlike preference shares, discussed later, dividends for ordinary shares are not guaranteed. The company's board of directors decides whether or not to distribute dividends, and the amount distributed depends on the company's profitability. 3. Capital Appreciation Ordinary shares have the potential for capital appreciation, meaning their price can increase over time. This happens if the company performs well, its future prospects appear bright, or there's a general increase in investor demand for the company's shares. Shareholders can profit by selling their shares at a higher price than they bought them for. Now let's talk about some risks associated with ordinary shares. First, no guaranteed dividends. As mentioned earlier, Dividends for ordinary shares are not guaranteed. The company may choose to reinvest its profits for growth or simply not have enough profits to distribute after covering expenses. Second, company performance. The value of ordinary shares is directly tied to the company's performance. If the company struggles financially, its stock price could decline and shareholders could lose money if they sell their shares at a lower price than they bought them for. Third, Market volatility. The overall stock market can be volatile, and ordinary share prices can fluctuate due to various factors beyond the company's control, such as economic conditions, interest rates, and investor sentiment. Fourth, lower priority in liquidation. In the unfortunate event of a company liquidation, ordinary shareholders are last in line to receive any remaining assets after debts are paid and preference shareholders are compensated. Ordinary shares are suitable for investors who have a long-term investment horizon and can tolerate some risk, are looking for potential capital appreciation and the possibility of dividend income, want to have a say in company decisions through voting rights. Therefore, it's crucial to carefully consider your investment goals and risk tolerance before investing in ordinary shares. Second, preference shares or preferred stock. Preference shares, also known as preferred stock, are a special class of stock that offers certain advantages such as prioritized dividends and potential repayment claims, but shareholders do not have voting rights. Here are some key features of preference shares. First, priority dividends. Preference shareholders receive dividends before common shareholders if a company declares them. The dividend amount is usually fixed but some preference shares have dividends that can fluctuate. Second, limited voting rights or no voting rights at all. Preference shareholders typically do not have voting rights on company matters, such as the election of directors or approval of mergers and acquisitions. This is in contrast to common shareholders who typically have voting rights. Third, higher claim on assets and liquidation. If a company goes bankrupt and liquidates its assets, preference shareholders have a higher claim on the company's assets than common shareholders. 
This means that preference shareholders are more likely to get some of their investment back than common shareholders. Here are some reasons why an investor might choose to buy preference shares. 1. Stable income. The fixed dividend payments on preference shares can provide a stable stream of income for investors. 2. Reduced risk. The priority claim on assets and liquidation can reduce the risk of an investment in preference shares compared to an investment in common shares. Here are some things to consider before investing in preference shares. First, limited upside potential. The fixed dividend payments on preference shares may not keep pace with inflation, and the price of preference shares may not appreciate as much as the price of common shares if a company's business grows. Second, Lack of voting rights. Preference shareholders typically do not have voting rights, which means they do not have a say in how the company is run. Overall, preference shares can be a good investment for investors who are looking for a stable stream of income and a reduced level of risk. However, it is important to consider the limitations of preference shares before investing in them. If you want to read about shares, go through the link in the description and download the PDF. If you think this video is helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Third, Differential Voting Rights Shares, or DVR Shares. These shares are a class of stock that entitle the holder to most of the benefits of regular equity shares, like dividends and capital appreciation. However, the key difference lies in voting rights. DVR shareholders typically have fewer voting rights compared to regular shareholders. There are certain advantages of DVR shares. First, higher dividends. To compensate for the lower voting rights, companies often offer higher dividend payouts to DVR shareholders. This can be attractive for income-focused investors. Second, lower price. DVR shares typically trade at a discount to regular shares due to the lower voting rights. This can be an opportunity for investors looking for a good value. Third, liquidity. DVR shares are listed on stock exchanges just like regular shares, offering good liquidity. Now let's talk about some disadvantages of DVR shares. First, lower voting rights. The main drawback is the limited voting power. DVR shareholders have less say in company decisions like electing directors or approving mergers. Second, price volatility. DVR shares can be more volatile than regular shares, especially during market downturns. Third, limited availability. Not all companies offer DVR shares. They are more common in certain countries and industries. Fourth, Negative perception. The use of DVR shares can sometimes be viewed negatively by investors as it raises concerns about control and transparency. You might have a question, who should consider DVR shares? 1. Income investors. If you prioritize receiving regular dividends, DVR shares with their higher payouts can be a good option. 2. Value investors. If you believe a company is undervalued and the discount on DVR shares is attractive, they might be worth considering. 3. Long-term investors. DVR shares can be a good option for long-term investors who are less concerned about voting rights and focus on capital appreciation and dividends. Important note. Before investing in DVR shares, conduct thorough research on the specific company and its financial health. Understand the voting rights structure and how it differs from regular shares. Consider your investment goals and risk tolerance before making any decisions. Fourth, and the final type of shares is treasury shares. What exactly are treasury shares? Treasury shares, also known as treasury stock, refer to the portion of a company's shares that were issued and subsequently reacquired by the company. These shares are not considered outstanding and do not have voting rights or pay dividends. Think of them as shares that the company holds in its own treasury. But how do companies end up with these treasury shares? Companies can acquire treasury shares through buybacks. 
This is the most common method. A company may decide to repurchase its own shares from the open market. Forfeiture. Shares may be forfeited by shareholders, for example, due to failure to meet certain conditions. Donation. Occasionally, shareholders might donate shares back to the company. Now, you might be wondering why would a company buy back its own shares? There are several strategic reasons for this. First, increase share value. By reducing the number of shares outstanding, the company can increase the value of the remaining shares. Second, improve financial ratios. Share buybacks can improve metrics like earnings per share, or EPS, and return on equity, or ROE. Third, utilize excess cash. Companies with excess cash might prefer to buy back shares rather than invest in new projects or pay dividends. Fourth, prevent takeovers. Reducing the number of shares on the market can help protect against hostile takeovers. Let's take a closer look at how treasury shares are accounted for on the company's balance sheet. When a company buys back its shares, the cost of those shares is recorded in a contra equity account called treasury stock, which reduces total shareholders' equity. It's important to note that treasury shares do not carry voting rights or earn dividends while they are held by the company. What about the impact on shareholders? For existing shareholders, buybacks can be beneficial as they typically lead to an increase in the value of their shares. However, it's also crucial to be aware that buybacks can be a signal of a lack of profitable investment opportunities, which might not always be a positive sign. Can companies reissue treasury shares? Yes, they can. Companies can reissue treasury shares in the future for various purposes, such as, first, raising capital by selling the shares back to the market. Second, employee compensation, using shares for stock options or other employee benefit plans. Third, mergers and acquisitions, as part of the payment in acquiring other companies. In summary, treasury shares are a flexible tool that companies can use for various strategic purposes for managing their capital structure to rewarding employees. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more financial insights. Thanks for watching.